Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about frequencies and percentages and means and stuff like that. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look at an income distribution table from the United States, some data from 2005. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of information of lots and lots of people who are in different income classes. And in those classes, there are different mean incomes. And so we're going to see how much we can stretch that information out. And so I'm going to show you how to calculate percentage frequency, cumulative percentage frequency, and explain what the difference is there. And we'll also see how we can get total income per group and total income for the overall picture and percentage of total income and cumulative percentage of total income. That's my plan for this video. Next video, I'm going to go down and show you how to do like Lauren's curves and show some inequality stuff. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be really exciting. So, um, first thing I wanna do, I guess, is I just wanna finish this column out a little bit. I've got all these frequency. Now, when I say frequency, I mean, how often does our data give me a point in that range or in that category? In English, how many people are in that group? You measured in thousands, so that's 3,731 thousands. That's 3.7 million people in this group. 5.7 million in this group, 7.3 million in that group, 14.1 million in that group, and so on. I'm gonna add them all up just because we're gonna need this for the percentage stuff. I need to know how many people total were in this data set. 114 million households, okay? Now, um, I guess I'll just go left to right from this. Let's do percentages. Now a percentage, as you hopefully remember, is the share of the total or the ratio of the total that you're currently using or something like that. I don't know, go look it up. But in math words, if I wanna do my, frequency, my percentage frequency, I'm gonna say equals this divided by that. Now, if I were doing this by hand, I would also do times 100 to put it in percentage terms. But since I'm doing it in Excel, uh, maybe yours was in a number form. Maybe yours was in a number form, but you can change it really easily up here, clicking on this little percentage sign, it'll convert your number to a percentage. Done, love it. Now, I want to also divide this by the total, we get this percentage, and this by the total, we get that percentage, and this by the total to get this percentage, and this by the total to get this percentage, and all of them. Every single one of the entries in this column, I want to be a function of this box. So we're gonna use those dollar signs again. I love Excel dollar signs. Uh, if you decide you want to freeze a box and use that box over and over and over and over. Uh, all you gotta do is put dollar signs on this coordinates. That freezes you in column C and in row 18. Now, sometimes later, you'll only wanna freeze the row or only wanna freeze the column, in which case there are different variations of the dollar sign. Hitting F4 cycles you through your options, okay? But for our purposes now, just double up, freeze that single cell. And then we're gonna see this box down here. We can either drag it all the way down or we can just double click it and voila. So let's take a look at what it is in each one. If you look at the equations up here in this line, you'll notice that every single one of them is divided by C18 which is what we wanted. They're all divided by the total. So that tells us 3% are in this crowd, 5% are in this crowd, 6% are in this crowd, 12% are in this crowd. All right, we got our percentage. You guys, there you go. That's pretty much all there is to that. Cumulative percentages are when you go through the group from one end to the other. In this case, we're gonna go from poor to rich. And when you pass these 3%, and start counting this group, 
we're going to keep the old three. And so these two groups, this group isn't just 5%, it accounts for the, the cumulative version of this is the lower 8%. I don't know if that made sense or not, but um, that's 3%. The next one is add up everything up till that point. That's what cumulative means. It was 8%. The next one is add up everything up until that point. So that becomes 15%. Now, I don't want to do 10 more of these calculations or whatever number that is. That sounds really boring. I've got a faster way. For every row, I'm trying to add up the sum of everything from this 3% to whatever row I'm in. In the first case, it's just that 3%. In the second case, it's that 3% plus the 5%. In the third case, it's that 3% plus the 5% plus the 6%. We can freeze that 3% in there using our fancy dollar signs again. I'm just gonna say this is equal to the sum of, we'll freeze this number first. Sum of D2 to, in this case, it's gonna look weird. I'm putting the same number in twice. But when I drag it down, that second entry is gonna drag down to D3. When I drag it down again, that third entry is gonna get dragged down to D4, and so on. So I'm gonna double click that box to finish it. All right, so interpreting percentages versus cumulative percentages. Let's look at this group here in row eight. This group accounts for 11% of the population, but if you wanna look at it cumulatively, 64% of the population are in this group or below. This group up here is 4% of the population, but 91% of the group is here or below. And so that's the difference between percentage and cumulative percentage. Now we gotta do something else for mean uh, because okay, so we're done with frequency and how often people are in each of these groups. Now we got a couple of columns about income. Each group has its own average income. I don't have information on individuals, but I can still get some good info out of this. Uh, so let's look at total income in millions of dollars. Okay, so what do we know about average income? Let me show you something real quick. We know that the average of something is equal to the sum of the XIs divided by the number of observations. Well, I am going to rearrange that and multiply both sides by n so that I get n times the average equals the sum of the xi's. All right, so let's see what I'm talking about here. I've got a bunch of average incomes for each group. That's an x bar for every group. That's this piece. And I've got a frequency of how often these people show up. Yeah, all right, so that's N times X bar, booyah. So if I wanna get the total, the sum of the XIs in that group, that's just gonna be this one times that one, oops, sorry, times that one. And then because we're adjusting to being in millions instead of thousands, I'm gonna divide by an extra thousand. All right, there we go. I don't need to deal with any fancy dollar signs because there's that. We weren't focused on any specific number that always happens. We didn't have to bother. Um, this was just a, each calculation was contained solely in its own row. So I've got the total income in each group, 4.8 million. Sorry, I got that wrong. 4,870 million, that's 4.9 billion dollars are accumulated by these families. 43.7 billion are accumulated by these families. And I can get the total income for the entire 
population in here, this labor income. And it's about 7.2 million millions, that's $7.2 trillion. Okay, now the rest of this, maybe you can pause and do it yourself before I do it. I'm not gonna explain much because these calculations, percentage of total income, are gonna look like these percentage frequency compared to the frequency. And these calculations, cumulative percentage of total income, are gonna look like these cumulative percentage. So go ahead and pause, see if you can do it yourself. All right, that's all the time you need. Uh, let's do this and we'll see if you did it right. I'm gonna take this one, divided by the total, and I'm gonna dollar sign that total. Most people had 0% of, let's see, is that right? All right, I had 0.1% of the total income. And then there's the rest of your curve, or sorry, the rest of your data. Uh, cumulative. Well, the sum of this dollar signs. Uh, let's round that out just so we, there we go. And voila, got it, guys. So that is how we deal with frequency and means to get totals, to get percentage frequency and cumulative percentage frequency. It's also just some functional practice in Excel. Hope it was helpful for you. Check out my next video. I'm gonna look at a modification of this table to do some inequality sort of stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace out.